<laughs> Welcome to Wednesdays with Whitney. Today we are live from Valley Junction and I am here with Miss Susan Watts, owner of Olsen Larson Galleries. And we are in the gallery. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for coming in. I know, super excited. So Susan and I met a little less than a year ago. Right? Is that true? Yep, that's true. At the Small Business Summit that the Greater Knowing Partnership come, uh, puts together. And I just remember, I think we ended up talking for like at least an hour, maybe more. Yeah. They had like a little mixer afterwards. And I was like, I like you. <laughs> um, the so, feeling was mutual. So the relationship started there. And then we just have kept running into each other, both intentionally and unintentionally. And um, little known fact, I actually have an MFA in photography. So the art world is, while I'm, I'm kind of on the other end of that now, um, is something I love. And you are like still deep in and helping people understand. Absolutely. So, tell me how you came to be the owner of Olson Larson Galleries. Well, I worked here as the manager for about mm -hmm. seven years. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010, I bought the gallery from Marlene Olson, who mm -hmm. I worked with. So um, I had done the day-to-day -day managing and marketing and things like that yeah. for seven years and then... So a long time to know a business, yes. yeah. but you don't really know a business until you own a business, yes. right? Yes. Were there any surprises? What was yeah. like one of the biggest yeah. surprises about taking over a business? I think the, the biggest surprise was just kind of getting used to the fact that, okay, I, I was the the buck stopped with me. Yeah, because I was used, used to the buck stopping at the at the next person. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though I was very familiar with all the day to day things and the clients and the artists, mm -hmm. it was I was the one making the final decision. So yeah, there was yeah. no one else to run it through. Nope. Even, but you had the I guess is there an advantage of knowing the systems, knowing yes. what worked well, yes, absolutely, and then going in and then was there something that you realized like really worked when someone else was in ownership, but you wanted to change just so you could be, yeah. you could feel better about it. I yes. think there's a, is, can you talk yeah. to me about a tweak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think one of the biggest tweaks that we made was um, kind of ramping up the framing side of things mm -hmm. a little bit because we also have a custom frame job. And um, also we changed out some of the artists. And mm -hmm. so um, that was those were, I think, the, the two main things that yeah. changed. But yeah, that, that was an adjustment that took a while to oh, kind absolutely. of figure out where, where I wanted to be because it had been mm -hmm. a successful business for quite some time. Yep. So, well, and I think yeah. finding what you're really passionate about, sure. like where you can put your energy, or, and especially with the artists, like finding who you really resonate uh -huh. with. And yeah. I don't know if that's a if that's a driving factor. Or yeah. what When you're looking for artists to represent, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? Um, we are generally looking for, so all of our artists are regional, mm -hmm. so we have a lot of Iowa that. artists, but yes, but a lot of um, artists from surrounding states. Mm -hmm. um, we have all original artwork here, everything's mm -hmm. contemporary, so everybody's mm -hmm. um, actively producing, okay. um, but we look for a variety of things, so we have a lot of very traditional work to mm -hmm. very contemporary abstract work. So it's just a, the thread of quality yes. is what we're looking for. Well, and that, and, and that's something that I think as far as reputation goes in the community, that is like the top word that comes to mind. So you're nailing good. that. Good. Well, I think that when you think about abstract work or these, these words that are thrown out, if you're not familiar in the art world, you might not even know what's abstract or what's contemporary sure. or what. Sure. So we're going to show you a little bit of work today. Um, I think something when you, when I think about galleries, even though I kind of come from that world, I had a lot of questions about well, I see things on your walls, but maybe uh -huh. that's not, maybe some of it's my style, maybe it's not. Do you have other things? Right. Yep. Tell me about how it works here. And that's a very common question mm -hmm. and a very common misconception. So yeah. what we do is if Whitney walked in, the first thing we'd say is, oh my gosh, we <laughs> love you already. You're amazing. That's the first thing. No. Um, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> No, um, so what we do is just we ask you some very basic, simple questions mm -hmm. just to see where you're at. So yep. you might walk in and say, hi, I'm looking for something above my fireplace. Okay, size, what are the finishes in your home? What yep. are you more drawn to, something abstract or landscape? Like you said, you might not know what those terms mean, so yeah. we have lots of examples to and show And a good you. thing, like visually, you can yes. just pull things yes. up. Yes. So, and I think that I'm pretty familiar with like, acquiring art it's like kind uh -huh. of a obsessive passion of mine uh -huh. but I think that something that people don't realize is you have original work here you yes. also have the framing side so when I so I'm getting some framing done with them I can't wait to show you all I've got 
four pieces, four pieces. Yes, that's accurate yes. in the works. Two of those are big oil. Are they oil? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they're big original paintings from Cuba that I'm obsessed with and have not had a place in my home until they knew what to do with them. So those are coming in. But then the other pieces, I found a calendar of these um, old school German etchings. I paid $10 for this calendar in Texas and I'm obsessed with them. They're like, they're so colorful. They're so beautiful. And I mean, the, the work itself is not necessarily all that expensive, but I knew it was unique. And I think that that's... Mm -hmm. A really fun part of being here is mm -hmm. whatever that's important to you and you want to preserve it and yeah. so we always tell people like everything's valuable to different people for yeah. different reasons whether it be a finger painting that your granddaughter did or like a Picasso yeah well so we, and do, I, we do it all and I love that because one of my favorite pieces in in my house I'll have to show you guys someday is a painting a watercolor painting I did when I was in fourth grade that my aunt saved for me and for, I didn't know this thing existed framed for me and saved it until I was 18 and gave it to me as a graduation gift and I look at this and I'm like this is cool what is this she's like you made it I was like I peaked early <laughs> like this thing is a masterpiece and then like you know we're still doing okay but like that thing's amazing so that is a huge point that yes. like anything can be and I think framing yeah. I'm obsessed with framing um, because I just think it elevates the work to a whole nother level. So, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And something else that we do often is refresh framing, especially in corporate environments. And it mm -hmm. makes, I mean, people think it's new artwork, even though oh, it's the totally. same thing that's been on the wall for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really, updating the framing and refreshing, it really helps. Yeah. Well, let's look at some art. Okay. Can we start with what's right behind me? We this can. thing is such a great color. I'm going to let you touch it. Okay. Okay. I can, I can do that. Okay. So this. Yes. So a lot of times when you think of art, I don't think people go directly to, can we get so they can see this beautiful color? Okay. Oh my gosh. So if you can't see, it's beautiful. Like I would say per different tones of purple. We've got like royal purple and then there's some fuchsia in there, mm -hmm. which if you guys have seen my house, you know that that's like <laughs> a passion color of mine. But tell me about when you're selecting sculpture, like what do you talk about or how do you present this to people? So I and think it's so light. It's so I think that what a lot of what we talk about with this artist is the process because yeah. this is um, yes. paper, cord, and paper. So this mm -hmm. artist makes a mold and then she uh, makes the pieces actually upside down over the mold. That's so cool. So I think people, they're drawn to the texture and the yeah. color, but also the process. Mm -hmm. And knowing something about the artist. I always yes. think that's the hard part about when I'm just kind of searching yeah. for thrifty things mm -hmm. is that I'm like, oh, I don't know where this comes from. But right. here, yeah. you have the stories of the artist. Can you tell us a little bit about this yes, artist? Yes, absolutely. And that's a lot of people really enjoy hearing that. Yeah. Mary Marco Hess okay. is out of Iowa City. Mm -hmm. She's a full-time artist, has a great little studio in her home there. Awesome. And she has made a name for herself in the, you know, in the kind of American arts and crafts um, community love um, it so she's in she's in collections all over the country she's represented all over the country she's in love that and here and here yay, yay. okay let's look yeah. miss elise is gonna join us here i'm gonna i'm gonna switch to this side because okay. you guys are more important in this conversation okay here we go elise let's make sure we can see your face yay, yay there she is <laughs> awesome okay tell us about this so when I was here last time picking out framing for my pieces, you pulled out, I don't think it was this one exactly, but it was like this thing. And I just, I have a passion for color mm -hmm. and like, I love line and you guys pulled this out and I was like, she I need to, I need that. to she buy a bigger house. house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me what's going on here. So this is Steven Metcalf. Mm -hmm. He's an artist out of Ames. Mm -hmm. And what, so this is oil, but it's mm -hmm. not what you might think. It's not. Okay applied with a brush okay he has oil sticks that are kind of big round crayons almost mm -hmm. really soft crayons mm -hmm. okay. and he still calls it painting even though he's not using a traditional paint yeah. brush mm -hmm. so the blending is really stunning he tapes it off to get these great lines yeah how do you get it so like does he kind of smudge it because when i've worked with oils in the past there's a little bit of a texture so does he do like yeah, I, I think there's a been lot, a lot of times uh, there's a lot that. of handwork with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I love the way that it's framed. Can you tell me when you were making a decision to keep the raw edge, what does that do mean? Yeah, so 
you know, we call that a deckled edge. And mm -hmm. if the artist, you know, works all the way up to the edge of the paper, and if it's, you know, it's just kind of it's got some nice visual interest there, yep. then we leave it. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is called floating. So, because it looks like the piece is floating on the backing. Yeah. Okay. Rather than having a mat around it. Yeah. 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 Which you traditionally, I think, see with photographs. You see that yes. matted look where it's behind. So, right. and I love that you know by the edge that this is original and the, the framing considers that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Can we look in the drawers? We can. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move. I'm going to get close. Hi, guys. Okay. And we're on the move. Okay. I'm probably just gonna have you guys hold things up. So they have all of these file cabinets. I'm gonna kind of show you what we're looking at here. Tons of these file cabinets filled with original artwork. So when you come in here and you say like, hey, I want something, but I don't know what, and I've got a place for it, and I really, I think when I realized that I could own original pieces, I felt like I was leveling up. And like, yeah. it's, it's like, oh, it's accessible. You can actually do yeah. that. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, tell me about this. So this is Paula Shudy Kramer, mm -hmm. and she lives in Madison, Wisconsin. She spent some time in Iowa as well, so good Midwest person. Yes. All of her work has to do with um, animals, people, relationships, mm -hmm. domesticity, the just the common common things that you see in nature, but that are yep. very charming and might make your day. So I love that. Beautiful little hummingbirds. Well, I think about that, wouldn't that be cool if it could be in a nursery, it could be in oh, a yeah. kitchen. Like, yeah. I just love how whimsical it is. Yes. Yeah. All of her work, she uses a lot of text in her yes. work too. Get closer. So all of it, um, there's kind of a story, you know, she did some of her okay. grandkids, butterflies are a common oh, theme. Gosh. Yeah, she for her. And you notice that um, Miss Elise is wearing gloves because these things are super precious. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Ooh, can we see that one? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I'm getting greedy now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Paula, Paula has been with us for a long time mm -hmm. and she's, she's constantly making new beautiful things. So how often do artists replenish their supply? Here? Is, is that a weird question? No. Nope. Like how often nope. do people produce or... Do you talk about that in advance? Yeah, so um, I think that the easiest way to kind of answer that is, oh yeah, here. Okay, this color. is my color. I mean, pause oh, and look at your Let's just take a moment. Ah, look at that, ooh, ooh. Oh. Perfect with the Mary Merkel. And I love the indentation that she does here. Yeah. So what is, what's happening here? So that's an original print. Mm -hmm. okay. So she's, it's an edition of Okay, so it's 20. a print, so it's like, I didn't take printmaking because I'm not detail oriented enough to take printmaking. Like that never worked for my brain. Yeah. Um, so that's so cool. So she's etching into a plate. And okay. And then applying the colors. Are the colors applied in different layers? Yes. yes. So I each <laughs> I went to art school a couple times. You'd never know. <laughs> I so, but I think something too that we mm -hmm. often are talking to people about is the mm -hmm. difference between a, an original print and a reproduction. Mm -hmm. So, because that's that's a, yeah. that's kind of a tough uh, distinction to make. So, so this is an original this print, is, and then right. So there, yeah. So there are only twenty okay. of these in the world. Okay. Okay. Yep. But, and then a reproduction would be if it was scanned or photographed, and right. then so a lot of you know if we looked at like a Gustav Klimt, who's we. We see the kiss everywhere, yes. and if you guys yes. are art fans, you like I, that was one of the first posters in my dorm room I ever earned, owned, and you know that's a reproduction, right? I mean, right, a very cheap reproduction, at least the one I had, right. but you know, at eighteen, that's what you well, want. Yeah, no, that's it's, and it's cool. Your art it's so cool. Oh, it's oh a puppy. yeah, here's a here's a puppy. Oh. So, and I also like the way Paula captures motion. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. in this, you know, we've all seen the dogs straining against yeah. the leash or jumping around, and the butterflies yeah. and. So she's, yeah, she's really got a knack for that. So I think it's great that you have just a ton of variety on hand. So yes. if I come in and say, like for me, the colors of the butterflies, like that, I would come in and say, like, I have a fuchsia wall. What now? How do I, how do I make that even, you know, and the piece, actually every, I literally think you just pulled pieces for my fuchsia obsession. Because the other abstract piece had the, oh my gosh. <laughs> So this is Laura Berman. She's a newer artist for us, and she's getting that reaction a lot from people. It is so beautiful. This is yet another type of printmaking process. Um, mm. This is a monoprint, so there is only one of these, but it's still done with... Um, when you mean monoprint, 
I mean, I get that mono is one, yeah. but why is there only one? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know the I answer. Have to ask Laura that. Okay. Oh, so wait, like, no. it's not a process? Is mono purge a process? No. no. It basically it, just means one of one. It so kind of describes. Like, I'm doing one yeah. of these. So, yeah. like, in a sense, it's like if you're a printmaker and you, it's like your original painting. Yeah. Yes, basically. Okay. And yep. so like these ones are work works within one series. So oh, they're dear, similar Lord, shapes so but beautiful. all different color combinations. So uh -huh. that kind of plays into the one of one as aspect too. Okay. So this is a this is a problem just seeing all these are so <laughs> gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, seriously, you need to buy bigger house. Um so anything else you want to add? Because now my brain is just filled with colors. Well, but no, seriously, like this is what we do every day yeah. on different scales. Um, yeah. So we can, we work, a service is a big part of what we do. Yeah. We like to make everybody feel comfortable with what yeah. they're looking at. And, you know, we consult Jen Harris, oh my God. another yes. newer artist for us. Mm -hmm. One, I think coming in, walking in and saying, I have no idea what I want. Uh -huh. And like, it's just playtime. It's kind of like when you walk into a clothing store and you're like, I know I want clothes. <laughs> but like, I, I think our language for clothing, we understand that a little bit more. Like, sure. Pants. We know that the, a certain <laughs> kind of pant, like I need my pants to be just a little stretchy. Like sure. I know that in advance. If they're not, like I'm not even going to try them on. Yeah. But with art, like I think if you're just starting the process or even if you're into it, you're like, I know I want something. But okay. I think what you guys can do yeah. is just say, okay, let me just open the archives. Yeah. yeah, we kind of guide the conversation, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies, thank so you. much for joining me today and for showing me all of this gorgeous stuff. Yeah. It's, it's so You're pretty. welcome. Awesome. Well, just, I'll probably be hanging out here. Yeah, so, you Asking know, all the drawers to be open. open. Yeah. You can get your receipt right yes. now. Oh, and gallery yeah. night. <gasps> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> did, Thanks you, for the reminder. You talk about that. It's on my calendar. Okay, so, okay. Good. So Friday, mm -hmm. from five to nine, mm -hmm. there will be 10 galleries in Valley Junction open mm -hmm. for your viewing pleasure, including Olson Larson. Yep, mm -hmm. up and down Fifth, Fifth Street. Yeah. yeah. And the weather's gonna be perfect. Finally. It's not gonna be raining. <laughs> it's gonna be art viewing weather. No, everybody here will have snacks and drinks and it's a great night and okay. we do it twice a year and we're, we're excited. I'm super excited. So come down, feel okay. the Valley Junction love. I think that this place is like, Every time I come here, it just feels magical. I walk into the shops. I see all the people I know. You guys are such a great community. That's another reason I love coming down here is that you support each other. So come and join us in Valley Junction on Friday night. Yay. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Bye.